Now we are ready to start testing our convolutional block. We'll do this by putting it into a really simple, a toy convolutional neural network. We have our data that we just walked through and we have our convolution block. We can put them together in a signal recognition network that looks like this. We have our training data. We pass the signal to a convolution block. Also, we include an activation function, a nonlinear compressor on the backside, hyperbolic tangent. Then we repeat that again, another convolution block, another hyperbolic tangent. Now the result of that will be a two-dimensional array. We'll take that and flatten it down to a one-dimensional array. And then we can pass that to a linear block, which is like a dense block without the activation function. Then add an activation function on the end. This one, a logistic function. So it'll take and make sure that the output is compressed down to be between zero and one we can compare that against the actual label. So the M, V, N, or H. We can pass that to a one hot block. That'll translate those four labels into an array of four zeros where one of the positions is a one, depending on whether the label is M, V, N, or H. And the position of the one will map exactly to which label was involved. This is a way to turn four labels into an array of four numbers, and now we can do math on it. Specifically, we can use a difference block to subtract the output of our convolution loop with our label, and then we can use a square loss, a mean square loss loss function to find the error calculate the error, calculate the gradient of that error, which then lets us back propagate that loss back through the network, adjust all of the relevant weights, and learn to represent those signals and match those labels. The code for doing this is a little bit different than how we've used Cottonwood before. So with the current version of Cottonwood, using blocks and building them into a structure this is how we'd go about creating that network. Here in our example, we'll put it all into a run function. This makes it straightforward to call, but also we can have down at the bottom, if name equals main, then run. So we can run this as a module as well. We'll create the directory for our output. Then we'll specify how many iterations we'd like to do for training and evaluation how often we would like to create reports and visualizations. And then here's where we start building the network. First, we initialize a structure. This will be a collection of blocks, and we'll call it ConvNet, short for Convolutional Neural Network. Then we'll go through and we'll add the blocks one at a time. We'll add our training data block, our one hot block, which we'll visit in a minute to see how it's built. Then we'll choose the size of the kernels and the number of kernels in our two convolution blocks. We'll add our first convolution block, our hyperbolic tangent activation function, our second convolution block with its kernel size and its number of kernels, our second hyperbolic tangent, We'll add a flatten block. That's, we'll also look at that since it's new. We'll add a linear block, specifying the number of outputs, four outputs since we have four classes that we're mapping to. And then a logistic activation function to go on the far end of that. Then our difference block and our mean square loss block. 